so let's first define uh, delta to be the full subcategory of the category of categories. <coughs> so uh, with objects, uh, these categories. Uh, where n is greater than or equal to zero. <coughs> yeah, I don't know. Like this. So, uh, <coughs> so here we made a choice. We chose that the arrows go this way. Uh, this is what Quillen and Waldhausen do. Uh, Bausfield and Kahn have them going the other way. So this is one of these choices you have to make in life and remember what you did. <laughs> uh, McCarthy's proof of the additivity theorem is based on uh, uh, uses that uh, that we can that this is the underlying one category of a two category. So let this be the full uh, sub two category. Oops, uh, with the same objects. <coughs> Yeah. Okay. So uh, now let me recall Waldhausen's uh, construction. So uh, so C will be uh, an exact category. So this is uh, an additive category with a set of exact sequences, uh, and we can have weak equivalences too. Let's see if I can write such a curly W now like that yeah uh, and uh, I, w I should also choose a zero object which but I will not write that so uh, being additive or being a billion is a property of a category but an exact category uh, being exact is not a property this is structure and we have to we have to choose that. So I will not write this most of the time. <coughs> uh, so now Waldhausen uh, defines uh, a category which I will write like this. Oops. So <coughs> Okay, so I will use these brackets to indicate internal HOM. So this is the category of all functors from n to 1 to n. So this is <coughs> this category is 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 what is also called the the arrow category of n. <coughs> uh, what? Yeah, yeah, that will be added. Yeah, <laughs> so so let's see. So we take functors from this arrow category into C, like this, <coughs> and uh, yeah. <coughs> Maybe let's write up a typical. Uh, let's write up a a, t a typical typical object so it looks like this: uh, a zero. To one, let me write zero one for that. A zero two, a one two. Let's see. Actually, I should start zero zero. Okay, so this is a typical object in uh, in uh, is one one C three. <coughs> okay, uh, and now this is required to satisfy uh, two things. Uh, one uh, for every uh, morphism. 
like this. Uh, if I compose that with uh, the unique map here, uh, then I require that this be the chosen uh, null object. And uh, yeah, okay. And uh, for every uh, morphism like this, uh, the this sequence. Here should uh, is yeah yeah <laughs> thanks okay so this is an exact sequence so the, this is uh, this is Waldhausen's uh, <coughs> is construction so let's tr let's let's just digest these uh, properties uh, or uh, in this case so <laughs> this comes from. So the first, uh, so so one says that this is zero, that this is zero, and that this is zero, and that this is zero, and uh, the second one says that if I go from here to here to here, then that is exact. From here to here to here is exact. From here to here to here is exact, and so on. So. Uh, if this is the first time you see this, uh, you probably have to sit down and uh, play with it yourself to, to fully absorb it. Uh, yeah, and uh, so now uh, Waldhausen's uh, K-theory uh, spectrum K of C uh, is is the symmetric spectrum. <coughs> uh, let's see, K C R K C R smash is one uh, sigma R one K uh, here uh, where The Earth space is so. Let's see. So we have this construction. Uh, now this is a simplicial category as in var as in varies, uh, and it has an, an induced structure of exact sequence uh, of exact category. Namely, we say that uh, a map or a sequence of such diagrams is exact if it's exact in every spot. And similarly, we say that a morphism between such diagram is a weak equivalence if it's a pointwise weak equivalence. So then we, so therefore we can iterate this construction and uh, I'm going to write SR R for the rth iterate of this uh, C. Okay, so this is uh, now an R simplicial category, and then we take this subcategory of weak equivalences in that and take its geometric realization. <coughs> so this is uh, the Rth space in the spectrum. In particular, the zero space is just uh, the realization of the subcategory of weak equivalences in uh, C. Uh, and the structure map uh, here uh, is induced uh, is induced uh, by the inclusion uh, of the one skeleton 
uh, in uh, in the uh, last simplicial. Direction. So, uh, <coughs> so let's see uh, if if uh, if n here is zero, then we only have this. So, uh, S11C zero is the category with one object and one morphism, and S11C uh, one uh, is just this. So it's equivalent to the category C uh, because, uh, yeah, we just have this guy. <coughs> uh, so, so that's why you you get this. So the one scale, the one, sc the realization of the one skeleton uh, in KC one is uh, just the suspension of, uh, yeah, okay. So, so this is Waldhausen's uh, K theory spectrum, <coughs> and uh, so this, so this construction uses uh, the weak equivalences in in C, uh, and and will depend on on the choice of weak equivalences. Uh, okay, so now. Uh, there's also a different kind of K-theory, which is direct sum K-theory, which uh, uh, has the advantage that you can say something about, you can understand uh, the homology uh, of that space. And uh, yeah. <coughs> okay. So so now I will talk about this uh, uh, direct sum key theory. Uh, so if we have a finite set, a finite pointed set, uh, then I associate to that a, a, a category. <laughs> Uh, where the objects uh, are pointed subsets of X. So these are subsets of X that contain the base point. And uh, morphisms uh, are, so the morphisms in this category from one such subset to another such subset is the set of all uh, subsets of the intersection that also contain the base point. Okay, and uh, now if we have if we have two such morphisms like this, uh, then we define their composition. Uh, to be uh, the intersection like this <coughs> so in particular if we have if we have one morphism here then that defines a map onto itself and it also defines a map from itself so we can think of this if as the map that collapses everything outside F to the base point and then includes that into V. <coughs> yeah. Uh, now, if we have a map, a pointed map between two such sets, then we get a functor in the opposite direction. which on uh, objects and morphisms take uh, is defined by 
let's see. So, so here we take the inverse image of the complement of the base point in T, and then we add the base point in uh, X naught. <coughs> Okay, so this is what is going to index a uh, direct sum uh, or sum diagrams indexed by uh, x, but not the base point in x. Okay, so now if if uh, C is an additive category, uh, then we define uh, this to be, uh, uh, let me write it like this, the category of uh, C-valued uh, sheaves on, on this. So, so this has a Grothendieck topology where a covering is a covering in the usual sense. <coughs> uh, and now if we have a, a map uh, like this, then this will induce uh, a map uh, in the same direction, which is the direct image. Namely, so if star of A is, oops, if star of A of V is A of, like that. <coughs> okay. Now, because <laughs> this is just a discrete set, so uh, being a sheaf is uh, every a sheaf is equivalent to its. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let me say that, that. So, so from here, we can we have such a functor which sends a sheaf to its collection of stocks. So, uh, which in this case is just, uh, let's see, uh, yeah. Okay, and this is an equivalence of categories. Uh, so why not just work with this instead? Because, see, this is functorial in the other direction. So uh, the reason we work with sheaves is that uh, this is functorial in this direction. Uh, okay, so now we define... Uh, is 1, 1 plus C uh, N to be uh, the sheaves on the N simplices in the 1 sphere. So here is 1, 1 uh, is delta 1 modulo its boundary. <coughs> and uh, a uh, simplicial map uh, will uh, so if we have a map from M to uh, N uh, that will induce a map from S11N to 
S11 uh, M. And so let me write that like this. And now we take the push, the direct image uh, of that functor. This gives a map like this, uh, and this is this is the induced map here. So in this way, we get uh, again a simplicial category with uh, uh, yeah. <coughs> and this category again is additive. So we can also iterate this construction and form uh, uh, the direct sum key theory uh, spectrum. So let me write that. So uh, so uh, is the. <coughs> So this is the symmetric spectrum. K plus of C with Rth space. So we do this R times and take the subcategory of weak equivalences if we have such a thing. And uh, and structure maps as before induced by uh, uh, by the inclusion of the one skeleton. Yeah. 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 Up to unique is up to canonical isomorphism. Yeah. No, no, they are use isomorphisms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know that this construction is useful if we don't have isomorphisms. <coughs> yeah. No, no, I never assume that. I always assume that it's exact. I only do exact categories. And for this, I have only used the underlying additive structure. Or <coughs> So this does not depend on the on the uh, on the exact sequences. If if we have a subcategory of exact sequences, okay. So now there's a comparison map between these two. So uh, in Waldhausen's paper, he says correctly that this is uh, a big diagram and this is a smaller diagram, and you forget stuff. But it's actually, uh, but he doesn't actually say what the map is, and uh, it's it's quite a beautiful formula for for how this map is given. So it's given uh, by restriction. Uh, along the functor whoops from here to here so if I have okay so let me say how this is given so if I have phi of a map theta uh, here so if I have a map, an object here is such a is such a, uh, a morphism, and now to that we have to give a subset, a pointed subset of a, of of the one sphere, and we just take uh, all maps in the opposite. Yeah. So remember, delta one n is the set of all such maps. So now we take all such maps such that. Uh, which, which are retractions of theta. And, uh, and infinity. <coughs> okay. Uh, so this is what it does on objects and uh, on morphisms. Uh, it's given like this. So phi. 
so if we have a morphism, so remember, um, this is, uh, theta here is a functor, and so if we have a natural transformation between such two functors, there's at most one, then we define this to be the intersection of the two subsets. Okay, so this defines uh, this map. <coughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, and now the additivity theorem. <laughs> says that uh, uh, this comparison map uh, induces a weak equivalence from uh, the K theory of of this, okay, and to the key theory of this. So, this category here is uh, equivalent to the category of exact sequences in C. And this is direct sum diagrams, so uh, this, as we saw before, is uh, equivalent to to the set of sto uh, to the to the category of stocks, so we get a weak e equivalence like this. Uh, what is this set? Let's just see. Uh, is one one two is uh, is a uh, this set, so here this is a map from 2 to 1 that takes the value 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and then this is uh, the common, uh, that guy. So, uh, so this is two copies of C. So this, uh, that this is a weak equivalence says that K theory uh, does not this does not see weak, uh, short, short exact sequences. If we have an exact sequence, then its K theory, th or the K theory of the category of exact sequences is determined by uh, the K theory of the sub objects and K theory of the quotient objects. <coughs> okay. Uh, when you have this, then you can break up uh, any diagram. So, as a corollary, uh, for example, you get the same thing with uh, the n simplices instead of the one simplices. <coughs> and yeah. So, or, but as you will see, we could also, the, the proof that I'm going to give now would, would also uh, work directly on, uh, you could just prove this directly. Okay, so, uh, <coughs> yeah, so, oops, so, so the proof is uh, that I will give is, is due to McCarthy and uh, uses very little about uh, about uh, the S construction. Uh, so, so this uses uh, two facts about 
uh, Walthausen's construction. Uh, namely, 1 is 1, 1, C0 is the category with one object and one morphism, and 2 uh, uh, is 1, 1, C uh, blank extends uh, to a two functor from so let's see so <coughs> yeah so let's see so uh, so as we have defined it now it goes here or to exact categories if we want it but we can just we can just go to categories but now in here we have two morphisms and here i take the the category the two category where i invert the one morphisms but not the two morphisms uh, and uh, then the is construction extends to a two function like this uh, let's let's just see why <coughs> So let's see. So remember that is one one was a subcategory of functors. Uh, let's see. Like this. Okay, so if I have a functor here, and if I now have two guys here, So then, here we have a theta upper star A, theta 1 upper star A, and a right, so now if we have a natural transformation here, that's going to induce one here by a horizontal composition of natural transformations. So this is this is the why this is a two functor. Uh, so I will so as a uh, as an illuminating exercise, uh, uh, I will <laughs> I will leave it to, to show that the S one one plus does not have this property. So this does not extend to a two functor. What? Yeah, so it means that you invert one morphisms, but not two morphisms. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Uh, so now this is so, so the proof is based on this uh, fantastic uh, fact. Uh, that uh, uh, if if a map of a uh, bisimplicial uh, sets uh, satisfies that for all uh, M, if I could read, 
well, now I'm, I realize, but I could also just leave it as it is. So if for every m uh, we get a weak equivalence, when we realize in one direction holding uh, the other direction fixed, uh, then then the induced map on when we realize in both directions again is a weak equivalence. So uh, if somebody tells you that uh, they don't know why they should care about model categories, you can tell them to prove this theorem without it. <laughs> <coughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay, so now we are going to look at a, at a big diagram. So let's see here. P, M, N, uh, I. So this is induced by d2 and d0. And uh, so now we make the first like this. So here, this is the join of m and n. We can include m in here. So this will induce a map here in the opposite direction. And uh, we can squash all of n into the last guy in m, and that induces a map in the opposite direction. Uh, and yeah, uh, we can do the same thing where we switch. So let's see, S11, one, one, C. Uh, like that. Then this here is defined to be the pullback of uh, of this diagram with with that arrow. Uh, and this six, this is this is a section uh, induces a section here. <coughs> and uh, now let's see. So now uh, there's a map here. This map is just a composite, and uh, it has a section uh, Q. So now, how do we define this? Well, we define a map into this pullback, so we should define a map into here and a map into here that match down here. OK, so we map in here by this map sitting here. And now if we continue down to here, this is going to factor through S11C0. Uh, and that's what we assumed was zero. So therefore, we can, with the map from here to here, we just take to be the constant map zero. So, so this is where we use uh, the first property of the, of the S construction. <coughs> yeah. Uh, so, So the thing that we would like to prove is that this map here induces a weak equivalence after we take subcategories of weak equivalences and, and, and realize. So, uh, so we may instead show that this is a homotopy equivalence, this is a homotopy equivalence, this is a homotopy equivalence, and this is a homotopy equivalence. Then we will then we will be done. So let's first do this one. <coughs> so uh, this is very general. Uh, so we have standard 
uh, simplicial homotopies. Uh, P1. Oops. Like this. Okay, so did I do that right? Yeah. So going around this way is the identity, and now we make a simplicial homotopy uh, for the map going around the other way uh, to the identity. <coughs> and uh, so they are defined uh, as follows. So, so now I just write x. So this works for any simplicial, uh, bisimplicial, no, any simplicial object anywhere. Uh, uh, like this, so this is h1 and uh, H2 uh, will be the same, but now using the other uh, guy. <coughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, so h one of x phi is phi one of a star of x h two x phi is phi two of a star uh, of x. Maybe let's put let's look at this one one first. Uh, or let's say like this. Uh, where, where for phi from n to one, uh, uh, phi one is the map here defined by. Uh, phi 1 of i uh, is m in m if i is in n and uh, phi of i is 0 and it's i otherwise. Okay, so phi 1 gradually pushes this n into the last spot in M, and how much of, of N gets pushed in depends on what phi does. So if phi is zero, then all of N is pushed in, and if phi is constant one, then it's the identity. So that's why uh, H1 becomes a, a homotopy from P1 upper star composed I1 upper star to the identity. <coughs> okay, and the other one is defined similarly. So, uh, so, so now we push the other way, so this is mapped to now to zero in N if I is in M. 
and phi of i is 1 and it's i otherwise. <coughs> okay, so, 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 <coughs> so these standard homotopy shows that that this is an equi is a homotopy equivalence, that this is a homotopy equivalence, and because this is a pullback. Uh, it also shows that this is a homotopy equivalence. So we have left to show that that this is a, a homotopy equivalence. Uh, again, going around this way is the identity, so we have to produce a homotopy uh, going around the other way. <coughs> and, yeah. So it remains to define a homotopy from uh, the identity to a Q composed with J. I'm going to take three more minutes and uh, and do this. Uh, so an object in PMN. Uh, is a pair of an exact sequence uh, in S11CN. So here we can interchange the two directions. So we can view an element, an object in here as an uh, as, 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 a, as an exact sequence in, in S1CM. And then it's an object, uh, let's see, let me write this down, with uh, a So this is an object in S11 uh, here, and A01 is an object in S11CM. Join in, and uh, then there's a condition. So let me write that here, such that I1 upper star uh, of a 0, 1 primed is a 0, 1. <coughs> okay, so that's what that is. And uh, now we would like to, <coughs> to make this homotopy <coughs> Uh, so, and this is where we use the two functoriality. Uh, yeah. So. This is M21. So the unique uh, two morphism. So we have we have this map phi two I defined by four, which be before which gradually pushes M into N. Uh, at the beginning, it's the identity. So there's a unique natural transformation here for every phi. Uh, so this induces uh, by uh, the two functoriality uh, a map from A01 primed uh, to phi to uh, upper star 
of A01 primes. And this I'm going to call A01 primed, comma, phi. <coughs> uh, so now we can apply uh, I1 of a star to this. Then we get uh, a map here. And uh, this I will call A01 phi. Uh, so uh, now we choose a, a push out. So uh, this can be any morphism. We don't know anything about that. Uh, so, but now we have this. short exact sequence and uh, and now we have this morphism here so we can pick a push out so you have to be a little careful how you do that uh, in order for this to be a simplicial map but uh, you can. Uh, so we do this and then define, uh, let's see, maybe I can write it over here. Uh, and then we define uh, uh, so then, then we define this map H. to be by that. And so that's, uh, that gives, uh, that proves that the last guy is a homotopy, is a simplicial homotopy equivalent and therefore we are done. You can see uh, this is a very robust argument. Uh, now I used it to prove that the additivity theorem holds for K-theory, but we could just, instead of taking geometric realization, we could apply TH8 to this, and we would still have the additivity theorem. Yeah, okay, let's have the break now. <coughs>